Hey guys, so we've been talking about microevolution, <clears throat> which you guys should know is evolution on a genetic level. So we're talking about genes. Remember, that's different from macroevolution. Macroevolution, and this is when we have evolution on a species level. <clears throat> so yesterday we went over the different types of things that can cause gene frequencies or allele frequencies to change. Remember, we calculated allele frequencies and phenotype frequencies a few days ago when you guys did those calculations with the fish. <clears throat> I don't remember what other organism there was on that sheet, um, but you guys know how to calculate allele frequencies, and that tells you if the population is changing, if there's microevolution happening. So we're going to look at how microevolution, how the founder effect and gene flow influence the amount of variation in a population. So how does it influence the amount of genes in a population? So you should all have a worksheet. If you don't, pause this, get a worksheet, all right? Um, the other thing you will need, <clears throat> I'm gonna list the things you need, okay? Um, you're gonna have a group, so you need to get in a group, no more than, I would say, four people. So you're gonna get with a group, not right now, you should not be moving, okay? Um, here's what your group needs. Okay. Uh, each person is going to need um, a sheet of paper. Okay, each person needs a sheet of paper. Um, actually, I haven't decided if we're going to do one per group or each person is going to have a sheet. Uh, let's just do everyone has a sheet. Everyone has a sheet of paper. Okay. <clears throat> Next, um, you're going to need a bowl. All right. No, these bowls are not dirty. Mm -hmm. They have cereal dust in them. I promise you, they were clean. Okay. It's just cereal. Next, you need a cup. You're going to fill this cup with cereal. My cereal's in a bag because, well, that's how I'm storing it at the moment. So you need a full cup all the way to the top of cereal. You can go ahead and dump that in your bowl, all right? And you need the cup as well, okay? So we're gonna pause this video. You're gonna pause this video. You need a bowl, a cup, and your cereal. Go. All right, you should have all your materials. You gotta be quiet though, in order um, so that you guys know what you're doing, okay? So the first thing I need you to do, this is your sample. We're gonna pretend these guys are um, organisms. We're gonna say that they are rainbow puffs. They're called rainbow puffs. Some of them aren't rainbow colored, but we're gonna say all of them are called rainbow puffs, okay? They live in cereal land. Yeah, I couldn't come up with anything better. So they live in cereal land, all right? Um, so this is our whole population. Remember we said a population is a group of organisms that are the same species and they can interbreed. So again, we're saying they're rainbow puffs. You could easily pretend that they are fish or wolves or something else, okay? Now, this population, what we need to do first, okay? I need you to answer question number one up here where it says, what is the founder effect, all right? A lot of people haven't answered that in my other class because they missed it, okay? So you gotta answer that. What is the founder effect? If you don't know, look back in your notes, okay? And you can always come back and do this because I'm not really gonna give you time to do this. So what I need you to do with your sample, all right? You can dump it out on your desk if you need a paper towel, um, go ahead, or you can just dump it out on a desk or a sheet of paper. You need to count how many individuals are in your population, okay? So the broken ones you can eat, we don't care about those. You're going to count how many there are in a population. So pause this video and go ahead and count. All right, once you are done counting, everyone should be done counting, okay? You're going to put it in the top left corner here where it says original parent population and total number of rainbow puffs, okay? you're going to put that as your population. So here's your population. Remember, they live in cereal land, okay? Now, we gotta figure out how many genes there are in this population. Now, the genes, there are different genes, and the different genes cause them to be different colors, right? So this would be like the blue gene, right, because this guy's blue. This would be the yellow gene, because this guy's yellow. So their genes determine what color they are. So what I need you to do, there are lots of different types of cereal in here. There's Apple Jacks, there are Fruit Loops, Honey Nut Cheerios and Fruity Cheerios. You need to separate them based on color, okay? So you're gonna put them in piles on your desk based on color, all right? So go ahead and do that, pause the video. 
All right, you should have all of them in piles, all right? You should have roughly seven, eight, nine, ten piles, something like that, of the different colors, okay? What I need you to do is count how many different piles you have. Remember, those are genes, so you're going to count how many different piles, and that means how many different genes you have. Now, when you count how many different piles you have, you're going to enter that number right here, right below where you entered your parent population. So this tells you how many different genes there are in a population, okay? So we have the total that we already wrote here, how many people there are, and then we are writing right here how many different colors there are, okay? All right, so make sure your population's in your bowl now. If it's on the desk, put it in the bowl, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that the founder effect happened to this population. So part of the rainbow puffs um, just got mad at some of the other rainbow puffs and they decided they weren't gonna live with them anymore. Okay, so they're gonna leave. They're gonna make their own population. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up this cup to the black line. Okay, that's gonna represent our population that's leaving. So we're filling up to the black line and this is our population that left. So we're gonna look at how do the genes in this population differ from the genes here? Does it matter if we have a lot in a population? Does it matter if we have a little? How did the genes change, right? Because we said the genes will change if we've got the founder effect happening because now there's less genes of a certain type in here. We've got genes in here, right? So it's changing the genes in the population. So I need you to do the same thing as we did with our big population, but we're gonna do it with a smaller cup, okay? With this population that left. So you're gonna dump it out, you need to count how many total individuals there are in here, how many are in your population, okay? Once you do that, you're gonna enter it right up here. How many are in your population, okay? Then you're gonna dump them out and put them into piles. How many different genes are there? How many different colors, okay? And you're going to enter it right here. So pause the video, I'll give you a few seconds, a few minutes to do that. <clears throat> All right, you should have counted the total number in this population. Remember, this is the population that left, okay? That total number should be right here in that middle box, okay? And then you should have counted the number of different piles, the number of different colors, again. That should be right here in this bottom middle box, okay? Now, let's pretend that three of these guys got lost. They went out. Um, I don't know what rainbow puffs eat. Maybe they eat flowers. They went out to go find some flowers, right? And they got lost. So they ended up creating their own new population because they couldn't find their way back. So we are going to pick out three of these. We're not gonna look, because that'd be cheating, right? So we're just gonna pick out three. So go ahead and do that, pick out three. This is again, another example of the founder effect. Three individuals making their own population, okay? So I got, Three, right? Three here. Notice, your sheet already says three, so we don't have to write that in there, okay? But we need to look at how many colors there are. So here are my colors. Let's see if you can see them. I have two yellow, and I have one Cheerio. I know they're kind of hard to see on there. So how many colors do I have total? Two. You might have one color total, because they might all be the same color. You might have two, you might have three. It's okay, okay? So you're gonna write how many different colors you have in this bottom box. Okay. All right, so let's go through the questions together. So it says diversity is defined as the variety of different genes or traits in a population. The more genes there are in a population, the more diverse the population is. Which sample was the most diverse? So which one had the most number of traits? And if you're stuck, which one had, sorry for the bell, which one had the most number of colors? Look at your table here. Which one had the most colors down here? Okay. You should have gotten the one cup sample. Now, why is it the one cup? Well, uh, you might have gotten that you had the same amount of colors in the quarter cup and one cup, but we would expect that the biggest one would have the most diversity. Which sample was the least diverse? Which one had the least amount of colors? So look up at your chart. Which one had the least amount? All right, you should have gotten this last one, the three, right? You probably only had one, two, or three colors in that one, okay? 
All right, it says here, natural selection, acts on traits that are already in a population. It says that organisms with the most beneficial traits will survive and reproduce. Thus, if there are more traits in the population, there is a better chance that one of them will have a beneficial trait that will enable it to survive longer and reproduce more. Given this information, which sample do you think will have the best chance at surviving? So, which sample has the best chance of surviving? Which one do you think? Right, you should have gotten the one cup sample. Why? Why does it have the best chance at surviving? Because it's the biggest and it has the most amount of genes. So chances are it's, it has a gene in there that's going to allow an individual to survive if something were to happen, like a disease or a predator or a natural disaster. Okay. All right, number five, are small populations or large populations more likely to survive and why? So which one, small or large, which one's more likely to survive? All right, you should have said large, right? Now why? Why are large populations more likely to survive? They're more likely to survive because they have more genes, more traits, okay? So big populations more likely to survive because they have more genes. All right, next part. If you need more time to write, you can go ahead and pause this video, okay? So save your last three rainbow puff sample, okay? So here's my last one. Remember I had two that were yellow, one that was regular Cheerio. Um, if you already dumped it back in, just grab three, all right? Um, now, we're going to do gene flow. Remember, gene flow is when we've got pop one population moving to another, okay? Or individuals from one population moving to another population. So it's when individuals travel between populations. So we're going to say that, remember these guys, they got lost hunting for flowers. They're going to go find three more people, okay? Maybe they got lost. Maybe they got angry. So what you're going to do is you're going to combine your sample with another group. So pause this video. Go find another group to combine it with, and you need to count how many colors there are in that six individual group, okay? So when you answer these questions, okay, it says how many different colors were found in your original sample? Well, you already had that. Remember, I had two yellow and one regular, so I only had two colors, okay? So I had two colors, so I'm going to write that down in question number four, okay? Number five says, how many different colors were found when you combined them? Chances are there's probably going to be more than the colors that you just started with, right? So if we add three more into here, there's probably going to be more, okay? Now, number six, how does gene flow influence the number of traits? So when we combine the samples, did it increase the traits or decrease them? Did we get more colors? Or less colors. Hopefully when you combined them you got more colors, okay? And do you think gene flow would make it harder or easier for a population to survive? So if we have individuals moving from population to population, is that going to make it easier or harder for those populations to survive? If we have individuals moving, right, they're transferring genes from each population to the next. So technically, that would make it easier because there's more genes. So the more people, the new people we add and the new genes are going to bring more genes into that total population. Okay, so it would have a better chance of surviving. So you learned today, okay, that bigger populations have a better chance of surviving. Okay, why? Because they have more traits. And if they have more traits, there's a better chance they'll survive because there will be a trait that natural selection will be able to act on and allow them to survive, okay? All right, you need to clean up. You may eat all of these, all right? Your bowls need to go back up front. Your cups, you need to save. They need to go back up front too. Clean up any um, cereal on the floor and you need to turn in this worksheet up front, all right? Have a good day.